She's giving a talk here at Temple Israel on a new novel, The Shiksa Syndrome. What are some of the more interesting reactions that you've uh, received to your new book? Yeah, let's have a look. The Shiksa Syndrome. Um, the more interesting, uh, the Daily News said that it was uh, Shiksa with a Gentile touch. That was sweet. Uh, the Jerusalem Post gave it a stellar review and talked a great deal um, uh, about this being a, a very real issue, particularly among reform, uh, you know, people, how I got to a T, you know, this whole kind of reform Jewish singles, Upper West Side, New York thing, um, and I would agree, I feel like I did. Um, some people are upset, they feel that Shiksa is pejorative, and they don't even want to know from it. Uh, another person uh, was really upset that they felt I didn't take this issue on in a very uh, heavy-handed way. You know, they wish a writer of some repute would really deal with this. Um, deal with what? Uh, that, that, that it exists, and I really felt like I dealt with it. I dealt with it just the way I wanted to. I observed it through the eyes of one person and what she does. And she um, accidentally, it's not premeditated, uh, passes for Shiksa and plays along, stays that way in the charade uh, to get this Jewish guy who ultimately may not even be worth getting and isn't that invested in Judaism to begin with. But the point is, is that it is a case-by-case it's a case-by-case case thing in real life, and the book examines one person. <coughs> now, what was that pitch-a-thon that you went to, and how did that go? Well, I had gone, um, I had gone uh, to the Jewish Book Council and presented this book uh, to have speaking engagements all over the country, and there were a few cities. Um, I did not get many, um, and. Um, there were a few cities that came up to me and said that they could not use that word in their um, in their community, that it was pejorative. And uh, somebody else said that it's just too controversial a topic. And I said in 2008, um, I think that, that for anything, first of all, they didn't even read the book, so they don't even know how I handled it. And uh, the handling of it, again, is through the eyes of this one one woman, Amy Albert, who's 39, in her position and her given circumstances. So it doesn't speak for every Jewish woman, every non-Jewish woman, for every denomination on both sides. It's one person's, um, you know, adventure uh, to ultimately to uh, her own authenticity and her, her own peace and her what's right for her. But um, um, in, in terms of controversy, I think that if it is, then it doesn't solve anything to ignore it and not talk about it. So has the, has the connotation of the word shiksa changed in, in your lifetime? Or? I think so. It was never a pejorative as far as I was concerned. If it was, I don't think I would have thought to title the book, The Shiksa Syndrome. But I do think it's also changed um, in that I don't even think it means non-Jewish women anymore. I was, I was, I was um, on the phone the other day with um, Shape Magazine, and I said, The Shiksa Syndrome. And the editor said to me, she laughed. I said, oh, you know what a Shiksa is? And she said, yes, I do. It means um, a blonde uh, Gentile woman who uh, likes Jewish men. And it was so funny, you know, like, <laughs> it, it, it was about the woman, she made it about the woman, as opposed to the male's desire, which is my intent with the Shiksa syndrome, like, ah, he suffers a little Shiksa syndrome. And that's one piece of it. And the other piece of it, it was like an attractive blonde. Um, it just means a non-Jewish woman, it doesn't mean a uh, California blonde, but that's what it's come to be known as the, the Shiksa goddess is known as this kind of Barbie doll, this blonde Shiksa Barbie that um, Jewish men perhaps salivate over. You know, um, so that's it, it, it's a little bit iconic in its own way. Why do you think Jew some Jewish men salivate over Shiksas and how widespread is this and why? Um, I don't have data for how widespread it is, but I do know that um, there's a 
there's a real attraction for other, and I think that there's that's in, that's enticing. I think to some extent, um, because we are a tribe, it could feel potentially inbred, um, familial, maybe not quite as sexy, a little bit maybe like you're dating your mom, or you're afraid that she'll become your mom if it's a Jewish woman. Mm -hmm. I think those are some of the basic fears. Um, but that's, again, the broad scope. That's not about individuals meeting and liking or not liking each other. So what's what's the attraction? Like for me, I'm a, I'm a Jewish male. And for, for me, the attraction is that it's much easier to objectify the, the shiksa. Uh, well, that's, that's another thing. Because and then that's another issue. That's in my other books. You have to get a lot of frogs. That, you know, when men objectify women. And then there's no real intimacy. There's not going to be a real relationship. So that's kind of that's kind of sad to <laughs> me. That's kind of sad when people objectify. Um, you know, the energy into objectifying might be better spent into knowing and loving. So I guess it feels like it's non threatening. Like, oh, I'll never marry this woman. So I can just fool around, I can objectify, but I, I think it's dangerous um, because, A, that's not true. That one, you know, Jewish and I could never marry that woman. Well, sure, you could. You could, you know. And second of all, it, it just, you know, objectification, uh, which has happened a lot sexually with, I feel, the Internet, because that's what it is on the Internet. Um, I think it's been bad for, for humans. Is there an equivalent among Jewish women looking for the Shagats? I think that there is, but I don't think it's as drastic. I think, I think a woman may be more like she met somebody and he's not Jewish and she likes him um, because of these qualities, you know, as opposed to setting her sights on that, you know, on that chicken, I think. How much have you encountered Shiksa syndrome in, in, in your life? life? Yeah. Um, it's there. It's there in my family with boys. Um, it was there. It was very potent when I moved to Los Angeles, and I dated some of the same, very same men that I had dated um, in New York and moved down to LA. And, and things that I said in New York that were just cute were suddenly now too Jewish. You know, and, and part of this Jewish has to get wrapped up with New York. Uh, New York is very different. And New York, uh, the Puerto Rican guy is using Yiddish and eating bagels. So there's this whole cultural Jewish aspect, which is very, uh, you know, indicative of New York. But that's part of what I'm talking about as well. You know, and that's another topic. <laughs> Interrelated, heavily. Right. How much is uh, negative reaction to the word shiks a generational? Like I'd say, with I think, uh, I think with each generation, it gets less and less. Right. Uh, uh, even just because there's less Hebrew, there's less Yiddish, you know, being spoken. So then the words just sound like uh, uh, regular words. Right. So I think it diminishes with each generation. You know, as the Holocaust generation dies off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any general things that you tend to love and hate about men? Oh, this is another, another topic. Um, I love, um, I, I love a man that makes me really feel like a woman. And um, I'm not crazy about that man that makes me feel like a Hmm. So yeah, so relationships work best when the, the man makes the woman feel like a woman and the woman makes the man feel like a man. Yeah, which right? is traditional, which swings circles back to this book in many ways. It's interesting. <coughs> <laughs> huh. And tell me about the uh, the book pitching uh, fair. What do you do when you, you stand up and you have how long to you talk two about? Minutes. Yeah. Like two minutes. And I put up signs. One minute, like 30 seconds, 